Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za Good morning, listeners. You're tuned into the Green Hookup Show with me, Diane Naidu. And as always, you know, we like chatting all things climate change, sustainability, innovation, and one of my favorite subjects, entrepreneurship. Um, listeners, as you will be well aware, November is the month when people celebrate all things entrepreneurship. Uh, during one week, each November, thousands of events and com competitions happen in 160 countries, inspiring millions of people to engage in entrepreneurial ventures while connecting them to potential collaborators, mentors, and even investors. For me, this is quite exciting that there is at least a month dedicated to entrepreneurship. I think it should be every single month. Uh, we are shedding jobs in our local economy every single month. So for me... Entrepreneurship should be our focus every month. Um, what I do particularly like about the Global Entrepreneurship Week, which this year is being held from the 13th to the 19th of November, is that it is supported by more than 15,000 partner organizations. So 15,000 organizations who are relatively sustainable and relatively successful supporting it, it must mean that there's some good behind it. Um, some people were lucky enough last week to attend the Liberty VUCA Knowledge Summit, which was held at Santon ICC. And uh, I must, I think my ticket must have gotten lost in the mail, Cookie, so I'm not sure. But uh, Russell Simmons, I'm sure he was so looking forward to seeing me there. <laughs> I had lots of insights I wanted to share with him about the local South African economy and what entrepreneurship looks like in South Africa, but I missed that one. Uh, from what I've heard, it was quite inspiring, quite inspirational. And what I particularly liked is that Russell Simmons also didn't hold back his thoughts on the very controversial Black Monday uh, protest that happened in South Africa. Um, I, I I particularly love Russell because he's not just a music mogul. He's one of those entrepreneurs who knows how to diversify his ventures and his revenue streams. He's also involved in fashion, amongst other things besides his array of musicians that he has uh, in his stable. Um, but this morning, we're not talking to Russell Simmons. We are talking to a very, very local entrepreneur who, as you will know, I, I'm very passionate about water innovations. I'm very passionate about saving our water resource. So our entrepreneur this morning is Anthony Chati Kobo, who is the Director for Procurement and Sustainability from New Leaf Management and Projects. Uh, Anthony, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's so great to have you in the studio. Like I've, I've always, and Koketsa knows, he's probably so tired of me saying it. Water, 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 water. We cannot live without water. I'm not seeing enough uh, uh, activity or action taken from the government side, but I'm happy that there are entrepreneurs who are not waiting for government to do it for, for us. you doing it. So tell us, what is New Leaf all about? Well, uh, with the concern that you're saying that uh, it's like everyone is waiting for someone else to do mm. it or for the government, we as New Leaf uh, took a step of faith to start saving water, uh, working with communities, working with uh, business industries to save water. Uh, our core business is to create water efficiencies within properties, be it uh, corporate properties, malls, um, stadiums, wherever people are, are, that's where we will save water. We also uh, service uh, the individual households, but it hasn't been our key focus because uh, much of our business has been coming or our engagements have been coming with corporates. Corporates may have uh, many buildings, so we are able to make a bigger impact in saving water around that way. We create water efficiencies within the bathrooms, where we have uh, waterless urinal systems, where we have uh, t uh, e touch eco tap, e eco taps, yes. which are one touch taps. We have eco showers. We have uh, leak detection systems. We also recycle water and uh, harvest uh, rainwater. That's awesome. So listen, so uh, just so you know, Anthony, on our show, we don't dumb it down, but we try to talk in simple terms. Okay. So when you and I and innovators and thought leaders are talking, when we assume that people understand what water efficiency is all about. 
not everybody knows what water efficiency means. Okay. I think we all know what wasting water means because we do it all the time when we're washing our hands and doing 15-minute showers to do like just a simple two-minute job. What does water efficiency really mean? Simple terms. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example. If you want to wash your hands, you can either use five liters or 10 liters. But when you talk about water efficiencies, if we put um, an eco tap, uh, the one touch tap, what happens is the same job that you were going to do to wash your hands, you can do it maybe within five seconds, you would have finished washing your hands and using less. You will actually use uh, probably a, a two tenths than what you would normally use uh, using a, a traditional tap. Same as um, with, 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 the, with the one touch tap, you can save up to 80%. But now I have to ask a question about that. So I've, yes. like I've gone onto your site and I've seen lots of things. And just so you know, you have an article coming up in the next Innovation Hub or Climate Innovation Center's newsletter. Okay. So I've done my research on your, on your business. So the One Touch Tap, like, and this is my question. When I've gone to the airport to different hotel groups and I use those One Touch sort of taps mm -hmm. and the water's still running after I've rinsed my hands, is that not wastage? Uh, or how does, how does your one differ from what... The other one, I'm just saying sometimes I've finished rinsing my hands, okay. but the water's still running. And for me, that's wastage. That, that's How is wastage. yours different? It's different in such a way that we actually set the timing to make it the least possible time that one should have finished washing his or her hands. So in seconds, what are we talking about? Maybe in five seconds, it shuts off. Okay. So once it shuts off, if should you need some more water, you can just press again. Okay. Then the water comes out. Okay. So like, again... And I love talking water. Right. Why is water such a big thing in South Africa and for South Africans in particular? We know that there's drought in certain parts of the country. There's no drought in Gauteng necessarily. We don't have water restrictions, but why should water matter? Water is life. Everything that uh, lives, uh, it circles around usage of water. Even in our industries, we use water. Future generations that are not born now, they'll still need water. Mm. Some uh, some predictors say that uh, our next war will be around water. Yes. It will not only affect South Africa, it's affecting the world. Yeah. And we have very limited water in the world mm. that is usable. Much of the water that's in the world is not usable. So we have to start uh, being sustainable mm. as we speak now mm. than to wait when we have a crisis like yeah. what's happening in Cape Town. Yeah. It's now a crisis. We shouldn't be managing crisis, but we should be proactive yes. to start saving water. So here's an interesting one. So I'm not sure if you've seen the movie. It's called The Big Short. So the movie is basically about how the financial world had a crash. Mm -hmm. There was a meltdown. And there was one person who was the lead character sort of in this movie where he predicted and he saw it coming. He saw this crash coming and he said, this is how we're going to manage it and this is what we will do. And all of these big finance houses were involved mm. in like JP Morgan, Chase yes. Morgan, uh, all these big institutions. At the end of the movie, to cut a long story short, he said the next, like where he's actually, this guy who predicted it and no one listened to, mm -hmm. where he's actually investing his money right now and since that time has been in water. And in China particularly, people don't know, China has bought up the last two or three big reserves of yeah. water. So ultimately we're looking at a world in which we will need to be buying water from China. You That's saying we, we can prevent that. Sure. I think we do have the way with all and I think... There's been a lot of politicking around the water crisis in Cape Town. They saw this thing coming. They knew it was going to happen and they did nothing. Over and above um, commercial, you said besides the commercial space that you are able to service, you're saying the eco taps we can use in our normal homes. Not that every home is fitted with a waterless urinal, never mind a urinal okay. on <laughs> its own. Is, yes. Are your products affordable? I'm just saying, is it for the man on the street? And again, I'm, I'm talking... At a time in the country when we still don't have everybody who has access to running water in their homes, how affordable is your products? Our products are quite af affordable. Uh, when we started the business, we didn't look at just saving water. People think becoming green or being uh, sustainable in the way you use uh, the natural resources, it's an expensive uh, project. It's seen as a middle class uh, possibility and a, a, a lower class impossibility. That's yeah. correct. But you'd find that uh, with the way we use uh, our water, it's quite 
economic. Like for for example, the one touch tap, the current price is below two hundred X VAT. So one ninety five X VAT. So that's just to buy the fixture, the fitting itself? Yeah, the, the fitting. And much of our innovation is around retrofits, retrofits on existing mm. environment. Yes, yes. So it's not a major capital outlay. But that's quite affordable. I'm just saying retrofitting is generally seen as an expense, much okay. more than if you'd started from scratch. I know retrofitting and greening a building afterwards can be costly, but yes. this sounds completely accessible to me. Yes, it is. And if you look at uh, the eco showers, which you can save up to 70 uh, percent. How do those eco showers work? Explain. I'm not a technical person. Okay. Like Oketso knows. I needed to ex- okay. be explained to me like in very simple terms. It's all right. Uh, the eco showers, how they save water is uh, it's water being mixed with oxygen. So oxygen is good for your wellness. Yeah. So when it mixes the oxygen with water, you give, you will have an impression that uh, there is too much water coming out. Where in essence, there is very little water coming out. So your savings are up to 70%. You still have the sensation that there's too much water coming out. We even have a video where you have a traditional shower head and an eco shower. So it's like a virtual water experience. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. What, is it, what do they call it? Um, they call it something reality, uh, virtual reality. Like it's uh, yes, that kind it, of experience. It, it's now <laughs> real. People used to dream about it, but we are bringing uh, dreams to reality. And what does that cost? Again, I'm talking money. It, it, it's 350 To fit sh- that shower head. To fit that shower head. But every, for four people using the shower head, they can save uh, up to 100,000 liters per year. So you only do, again, I'm, I'm going completely off track. Okay. So you do the shower heads, you do the eco taps. Do you do anything in terms of heating of water at source as opposed to the geyser type thing? No? No, we don't. But we don't. when you use the shower head, it means that you're using less energy. It saves you energy and even carbon carbon emission, you can save up to three tons of carbon emissions when wow. you're using the eco shower head because you're using less water that Hot water, you'll be using less of it. So you won't need much energy to heat your water. So it, besides saving water, you're saving energy. Energy as well. Yes. Okay, so now let's get down to the nitty gritty. So you were growing up as a young boy in whichever town you're going to tell me about where you were growing up. Did you imagine that one day this would be your business? What did you dream of becoming and how has that journey been into entrepreneurship? Well, I can say there has been one match. If it, I mean, I, I'm a procurement professional by nature, and it's in, it runs in my blood. I need to be economic in whatever I do and whatever I purchase. Mm. But uh, things around water has never been in my dream. I wanted to own my own business. But uh, with time, I realized the importance of water. So I was in the corporate industry. I later... Uh, uh, left the industry in 2015 when I joined uh, Jonathan, who is my brother, who is in that particular business. Mm. So we kind of uh, uh, merged together mm. and I now saw the value of water. I started, I never dreamed about it, but mm. it just happened mm. that water is the thing. And water, besides having to save water as a person, you need to be, I mean, sustainable in whatever you do, be mm. it water, be it anything. So it becomes something to my heart to also save water and something to any members within the business. Mm. That's it. That's incredible. I mean, like we often have people on, on radio, like people who've taken a completely different path and a different direction from what they'd started out doing. So for you, it's sort of been that, but you knew you always wanted your own business. I need to ask how the relationship with Climate Innovation Center has worked or hasn't worked for you. Has it been a plus? Has it been a hand up? Uh, have you found things a bit easier? Are you connecting with other people? W- what does that mean for you? And would you encourage other people to pursue that route if, it, if they are in a sustainable business? Yes, I would. Uh, there are many other institutions like uh, Innovation, like uh, Resolution Circle. Mm. And uh, I think it's a good connection point mm. because you get to see many entrepreneurs from different walks of life. Mm. You get to share, you get to learn mm. how other business people have made it. You get to learn how to start your own business. So it's mm. a conducive environment when you're starting. Mm. 
and it helps you to grow with the mm. various networks that you um, get to associate with. Mm. And uh, again, I just um, coming back to the point, like a lot of people, this is what I found that when we meet entrepreneurs, they might be good at what they do. They might not be good at running a business. And that's the flip side to it. So I could be good at innovation. Mm -hmm. I could be good at law. I could be good at technology. But running a business is not as simple as people think it is. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, that's quite true. But uh, you'd find that uh, with um, as with many entrepreneurs, they don't operate in isolation. Mm. They tend to bring many people on board. Mm. Like me, I joined Jonathan, who had the main vision. Mm. And... I came with my different skill set. Mm. So with the various skill set within the business that each and every one of us, we have got uh, private bankers within the business. Oh, that's awesome. We have got uh, operation specialists mm. within the business. So people from all walks of life are teaming up together. Mm. But what happens is with most entrepreneurs, they want to be themselves. Yeah. Then you fail because mm. uh, if you look at even great corporates like Apple Corporation, mm. there are many people within the business, mm. but it started with one person. Mm. So he knew that he, he couldn't do everything. Mm. You needed support from various people. You need specialists from mm. various uh, various uh, uh, colleagues. Yes. So that's how I think any entrepreneur should view it when you're running a business. Yes, you are the champion with a vision, but you need to work with other parties. So... I need to switch to something just, again, this is not mm. a completely off the track, but I need to talk about the issue of social housing and the route that I think government should be going in terms of the housing which they are rolling out. I've got my own personal views on the solar geezer. It doesn't make sense to have solar geezers and people don't have access to electricity for other things. Uh, we're just going to go to a quick ad break and we'll pick up on this conversation after. Thank you. Brandlive.co.za Stay tuned to Green Ovation, the show that gets you talking, keeps you informed on climate change, innovation, and green entrepreneurs who are changing the country, the continent, and the world. Sustainability, innovation, entrepreneurship, just a few of our favorite things. Find out more about us on greenovationsa.co.za. Follow me, connect on Twitter at dd underscore naidu now. Are you an innovator and solution provider? The Innovation Hub is looking for entrepreneurs in the ICT, advanced manufacturing, bioeconomy, and the green economy sectors. If you have an innovative prototype or startup business which addresses an existing market need and you're predominantly based in Gauteng, we invite you to apply for one of our incubation programs. For more information, visit the innovationhub.com or call 012-844-0000. The Innovation Hub is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Gauteng Growth and development agency you're listening to brandlive.co.za and you're back listeners we are chatting to anthony chatikobo we're talking all things green we're talking all things innovation specifically in the area of water innovation he is the director for procurement and sustainability at a company called new leaf who are a little bit as obsessed as i am with saving water our most precious natural resource anthony before we went to the break I posed a very deep question and a loaded question, which I suppose is not really in your domain. I just want to pick your brain and hear your okay. thoughts on it. My thoughts around solar geysers, it makes sense in one regard, in that it's one component of sustainable housing, mm -hmm. social housing. For me, it should go hand in glove, for example, with the waterless urinal. It mm -hmm. should go hand in glove with rainwater harvesting, grey water harvesting. Having one component surely isn't enough. I agree with you. It isn't enough. You would find that uh, that's why within our provision, we provide a, I mean, a total solution where we look at every aspect. How can you save water? What's mm. applicable to a particular environment? So I think uh, with uh, the low-cost housing, they should look at uh, putting tap uh, taps that are water efficient, mm. They should look at uh, putting uh, shower heads that are efficient. and they should It makes also, sense, right? Yeah, it does. And they should also look at uh, rainwater harvesting. 
So tell me in terms of the, like I'm always obsessed about it, like the whole, we haven't had someone who does the rainwater harvesting yet on the show. Okay. So I'm excited for you to tell us, how does it work? Do you capture that water? It runs through your, your taps. How does it work? Yes, uh, you, you capture the water just as uh, it falls on your, on your roof. Mm -hmm. Then depending on the water usage, you can store it in uh, like those Jojo tanks. Then you will have another pipe that runs through either for your gardening or other areas. You can even put a pump depending where the Georgia tank is situated. But you can create a gravity force where you can fit it slightly on an elevated area. Then um, depending on how you want to use it, we can even have a modular recycling water recycling plant where it can recycle it to drinking standard or it's uh, recycled just for use, like the water that you actually use to wash your dishes or to bath. Mm. It can be recycled for other uses. Where that's you the can, gray water part, that, right? That, that's the gray water part. So you need to be sustainable in all means possible. But mm. all the same, we need to look at, okay, is it uh, cost effective to do that type of sustainability? Mm. Or it can be channeled to say in a community. Yeah. We can set up one particular area, a central place where all the water, is the connected. wastewater is, is connected and it's collected. If it's recycled and it's spread again to mm. the various uh, uh, houses, say a thousand houses mm. will be serviced by a particular water recycling plant or a water collection uh, plant. Well, look, I'm I'm definitely putting pressure on government in, in every single engagement that we are going to. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We need to go green in terms of any new housing developments at all, even if it's a school, if it's a clinic. It all needs to go green. So, uh, Koketsu says we've only got five minutes left. Okay. Koketsu, the time just went by so quickly this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Must be because we're having fun. Anthony, you wanted to share with me just very briefly about your waterless urinals. It doesn't make sense to me like in my mind, but clearly it's making sense for you. Yes, traditionally people used to, when they, the males use the urinal, they're used to flushing water. But with a new innovation, which is a waterless urinal system, is that uh, you will not need to use water at all. So it cuts your costs by up to 75%. That is costs for your sewage, because uh, when you use water, your sewage uh, charges are based on your water consumption. Mm, mm, mm. So those are the savings around water. Savings in terms of uh, use, you won't need to use um, deal blocks mm. or even PMETs mm. because the waterless urinal system, it blocks the odor from coming up. Wow. And besides blocking the odor, it actually ensures that the area is more hygienic. Dry mm. sanitary is better than uh, when it's a humid area. Mm. A humid area, it's a conducive area for bacteria to 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 generate. With a waterless urine now, you can save up to 300,000 liters per year. Wow, that One makes me happy already. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you will not need water at all. That fresh drinking water is diverted either to drinking, cooking, and other necessary mm. um, requirements. When you actually mix urine with uh, water, it actually crystallizes your pipes mm. quite faster, and mm. your pipes can quickly clog. Now that urine is going without mixing water, it actually increases the life expectancy of your uh, plumping infrastructure. That's incredible. I think we need to we need to get you back on the show. We need to get you in the studio with people who are talking housing okay. and property developments. Um, but I just need to ask. We I think we have two minutes left. Okay. Uh, if you can give me just what is your what would your words of advice be for entrepreneurs going into the sustainability sector, not just water, just going into the green sector? What would your strongest words of advice be? Okay, you have to have faith because sometimes when everyone is not seeing your vision, if you forge with it, God will help you through. Mm. And you should not get distracted by, uh, I mean, temporal sh uh, sh uh, setbacks. Mm. You should keep on moving with that dream. You'll come to the end. It's difficult, especially in the green sector, mm. um, because it's, some, it's something that is thought of a different class. But it's something, I mean, being green, it's a concept for every individual mm. in South Africa and every individual in the world. There is no demarcation to say it's meant for this particular line of people, but it's for everyone. And if we do that, we will have enough water for South Africa, enough water for the world. And we may become like the... Um, 
basket for water because water is going to be sold even in the world. It can be traded. You can export water. Right now, I understand there are countries that are exporting water to mm. other countries. So mm. I think it's something that we really need to focus on and uh, it will be something great for generations now and generations to come. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us in studio. It was awesome chatting to you about all of your water innovations. And listeners, you heard it. You've got to have faith. You heard from two voices in South Africa. We have 54 million voices in the country. We are using ours. Use yours. Till next time. Thank you.